up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So on my 100th episode, which happened recently, I mentioned how I was gonna be gearing multiple skills towards a single specific build. Namely, the Corrupted Druid. An adventurer who found a strange staff in a swamp, possessed by a dark entity that has slowly begun to corrupt him down to his very soul. To that end, I present you our first piece of armor from our tragic tale. Behold, the Gorget of Corruption. I love this damn thing. Look at it. It's clearly like some nice piece of armor that's been taken over by an eldritch horror corruption. And just the whole build in general, like the technique used to make this little overlay and the general construction, like, ah, oh, it was so much fun. <sighs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna stop geeking out and just show you how I made the damn thing. So let's level up this skill. Making templates. So I was especially excited to make templates this time because I finally got to use my foam golem. Somebody mentioned in the comment section of that video, by the way, of naming him number two, which I kind of dig, like, come number two. It's like Picard, it's great. To see how I made him, check out this video here. Okay, so for starters, I busted out some plastic wrap and covered the area my armor would sit in. Then I just started covering the whole thing in strips of masking tape. Now, if you don't have a golem, you can do the same thing on yourself, though you might require some assistance to put everything on you. Check out this video here to kind of see what I mean. My, my wife helps me out with it in the beginning. All right, so once I was happy with my coverage, I started to draw in my design. I didn't really measure anything as I'm gonna have a chance to do that later on. For now, I just went with a design that struck me as being really cool looking. Now with that all set, I just peeled the tape edges back and removed my rough template. Then I cut away all of the excess material to get a better idea of how the finished product might look. And I love techniques like this, like there's no complex measurements needed. Everything is just together how it should look and perfectly fitted for you and in your style. I guess just kind of a bit more art than science. Now to be able to put this thing on, I needed to cut an opening along one of the sides. This slit is gonna be held together by straps and buckles later on. Now I also needed to cut off the collar piece as that's gonna be made out of a separate piece of leather. And with these pieces all cut out, I decided to transfer them onto paper just so I can smooth out any of the wonkier details and get a cleaner template out of the deal. Oh, and the collar is also gonna need just a little something extra. You see, in order to connect these two pieces together, I need to have these kind of little, little teeth, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, uh, these little teeth for the rivets to actually connect through. To prep for this, I first measured an inch out from the bottom of the collar and made marks. I then connected all of those marks, making sure to follow the contour of the template. Next, I made marks in half inch increments all along that line. Using these marks as a guide, I made these inch wide teeth with these inch wide triangular gaps in between them. Once these little triangles are removed, I was left with this uniform gear-like array of teeth. So before using these templates to actually mark off and cut out my leather, I decided to test them out on number two just to make sure I liked the fit. And I am glad I did too, because it would have been a tight squeeze. Something I kept in mind to make up for when I actually put it onto the leather. So with that in mind and my templates otherwise all set, it was time to move on to prepping the leather. For this project, I am using this beautiful eight ounce veg tan leather I got from Tandy. Using some more masking tape, I positioned my templates onto the leather, trying to use up as little as possible. I also decided to add about a quarter of an inch to the opening edges, just to give myself that extra half of an inch of breathing room when everything's all together. So that's just these edges here where the buckles end up going, um, and that's gonna make the whole thing just a little bit wider for when it sits on my neck. And then I moved on to cutting with a good sharp knife. This is where spending the time to make a solid template really pays off. Never once was I worried about my cuts not being correct. I just kind of knew it was gonna fit together because I tested it so many times. Now that our shapes are freed from the tyranny of the hide, we need to make these little teeth a bit more flexible by removing material from the back where they bend. Now they sell special tools to use for doing this, but for my purposes, a good sharp razor totally did the trick. By removing roughly half of the thickness of my leather, I gave these little teeth a clean area to bend without fighting against the rest of the leather. 
This also helps to fight against any like wrinkling or creasing that might show up in the leather as you're trying to like bend against it if you don't if you don't remove that material. Okay, but with that new little technique, at least new to me, out of the way, we'll pop back into our regular bits of prep work that we do for like every leather project. This is of course beveling the edges with the aptly named edge beveler, and then slicking the edges with the also aptly named edge slicker. The leather working community doesn't really beat around the bush with their nomenclature, I'm realizing. <laughs> now before going any further, I taped up my seams and checked to make sure that I liked the look and the fit. And with everything looking good, I marked the centers of my little connector teeth and punched holes for my rivets to go through. So I also needed to transpose those holes onto like the chest piece so that they matched exactly. And I'm actually kind of proud of like the ghetto method I used to make sure everything lined up right. Okay, so check this out. First, I added masking tape to each one of the teeth so that the sticky side was facing out. Then I set it into position on my golem and carefully position the chest piece, pushing it firmly down and pressing it onto the tape. Having done that, the whole piece just came off together, locked into the correct position. Then all I had to do was twist a pencil in all the little rivet holes. This left me with the marks in the exact spots that I needed the holes to be. All that was left to do then was just to punch those holes out at those marks. You know, there is starting to be a real danger that I might actually know what I'm doing here. Sweet, so at this point, all of our leather is like prepped and ready to go and we can move on to tooling the leather. So I really wanted this piece to look like it was otherwise a normal piece of armor that is slowly being corrupted by this blight. To that end, I not only wanted to figure out all these like cool growing tentacles and eyes, but also the bits that would be underneath it, right? The normal parts of the armor's decoration. For figuring all of this out, I busted out this baking paper and traced the shape of my leather pieces onto it. I like using baking paper because it resists water and it's way cheaper than like dedicated tracing paper. With that cut into shape, I overlaid it onto my mannequin and taped it onto the leather. I also did the same thing for the collar piece as well. Then I just drew in the general design, figuring out where all the tentacles and the eyes would go. And for the druid's like pre-corrupted mark, like the sigil of his order, Maddie made this dope tree symbol. I really, really like this symbol. Like it kind of has the same feeling of design I get from like the, the Star Wars symbols for like the Rebel Alliance or whatever, right? Like simple and kind of sharp, but, but definitely druidic. It's a tree, which totally fits for this channel, by the way. Good job, Maddie. In fact, while we're shouting Maddie out, she came up with a lot of this general design, like the layout of tentacles and stuff as well. I've decided to keep her. She's doing well. Now, for the rest of this design, I decided to add all these like vines and leaves because it seemed thematically interesting. And honestly, I had the leaf stamp and it was gonna be easy. <laughs> so with that all figured out, I dampened my leather and marked in the designs with a stylus. Then I went back over and cut everything in with my swivel knife and added a bevel all around the tree sigil with my bevel stamp. Finally, I added these sweet leaf stamps to my vine just to tie the whole thing together. And at this point, it was honestly already looking like a regular piece of armor I'd make on this channel. Like thematically, all of this would just kind of fit in with the quiver that I just made. Like I could see making this as like neat elven armor or druidic armor in general. I did notice though, whenever I put it together that the back end especially and a little bit in the front would kind of flare out still. It was still kind of too stiff. To fix this though, I used a sponge to soak the piece from the back just so it didn't muddy up my tooling. Then I positioned them on number two and carefully wet formed them into shape. And again, this thing was already looking great. It's just too bad it's destined for corruption. Speaking of the corruption, while the rest of the leather dried into shape, I grabbed this bit of four ounce leather I had laying around and used it to trace in my blighted tentacles. Now, because all these little spirals and arms and whatnot are kind of intricate, I decided to first use my swivel knife to cut in the whole shape. I just cut in much deeper than usual to really give myself a good track. I then used that track as a guide for my razor to finish the cut and remove my design from the rest of the leather. And using the swivel knife to kind of lay the groundwork first honestly was a huge help. Like all these really tiny arcs and designs or whatever would have came out a little bit jagged if I just used the straight razor for it. But by using the swivel knife, everything came out really clean. I was very happy with it. I then went ahead and just beveled the edges and slicked the whole thing down to keep it all looking clean. All right, so that handles the tentacles and everything, but I really wanted these eyes to be popping up along the root of the blight. 
By the way, I learned how to make these eyes in this past Monday's video. Link here if you're interested. So to attach this main eye in the center here, I cut a leather round about a quarter of an inch larger than the cabochon. I also marked a center ring about an eighth of an inch smaller than the cabochon. Then I cut it out into this little donut so that the old one can peek through. Next, I soaked that ring in water to make it malleable and proceeded to wet form it around the eye. Doing this gives me a raised area for the eye to fit into and a flat area for stitching it together. I also made a couple of smaller eyes of the same color scheme. Because they are so small, I really didn't want to surround them in leather like I did with the big eye because it would kind of eat up that whole size and make them a lot smaller. So instead, I grabbed the backing to a rapid rivet and applied a generous amount of super glue to the back. Then I positioned it onto the back of the cabochon, effectively turning it into an eye rivet. Now I can just stick them wherever I want and lock them into place with the rivet cap. And with that, this phase of the build is done. Let's move on to dyeing. So obviously for this build, I wanted to use a lot of browns and greens. I mean, he's a druid, spends all of his time in the woods. Just kind of made sense to me. So I started with the Fibings Kelly green and carefully painted in the leaves and the tree. Okay, so I don't know if I'm the only one who becomes like a 90 year old tinkerer when I do any detailed work, but look at this old fella. He's just, he's just doing the best he can. I don't know if it's... What is that? <laughs> Next, I used the light brown just to color in the top of my tree sigil. For the main color, I decided to go with a nice mahogany. I've used it before and I really like how rich it is. The red undertones add a lot of depth to the leather. And with the colors all laid down, I hit the whole thing with a resist and then followed up with a mahogany antique gel. This stuff just settles in all the cracks, making the designs pop and unifying the whole piece with the patina of age, thus antiquing. And that's pretty much it for the dyeing step. I mean, I, I dip dyed the tentacles and stuff, but that, that's nothing to go over. But speaking of those corrupted bits, spreading corruption. That's right, it's time to wrap this thing up and add on the blight. First off, I used a four hole punch to drop in some lace holes all around the circumference of my eye gusset. With that prepped, it's time to send these bad boys for a swim in some USMC black dye. Dip dyeing will forever be my very favorite way to dye. Okay, now that those are colored and looking right, it's time to attach them. First, I lay the eye ring into position and use a sharp needle to mark where all the holes need to be. Then I punch them out with that same four prong punch. Since the holes match up perfectly, it was a breeze to just saddle stitch the whole assembly into place. The finished result is this stupidly cool centerpiece. Always watching, always judging. Now because the blight creeps up the neck piece too, it was time to put the two pieces together. To do this, I just lined up the holes and added the rapid rivets to secure them together. Construction wise, this build was ridiculously simple, but look how dope that is. Like at this point it's, it's together and already it looks amazing. I was really excited at this point. It's just one of those pieces that instantly look cool. Love this thing. Okay, so to add the rest of the corruption, I decided to use this barge cement, mostly because I didn't want there to be stitches all around, so it didn't look like it was part of the leather. I wanted it to look kind of organic. After positioning the blight to see where it falls, I added some of the cement to where I knew they made a lot of contact in the corner. And once the cement was ready, I put the two pieces together and tapped it with my mallet to ensure a secure bond. Next, I traced the design with a pencil just so I knew exactly where to add the rest of my cement. I also took this time to figure out my eye placement and punch the holes they go in. Then I just locked them in with their rivet tops. Now I could just continue along my merry way, adding cement and laying down blight as I went. And again, I feel like I've nerded out every step of the process so far, but look at this thing. It just came together so perfectly and it looks so dope. I, I love this thing. It's so cool. <laughs> All right, so for a final bit of construction, I made these buckle straps. Now I've made these like on the show 10 times so far. So check out some earlier episodes if you want to see how those are put together. And these I just locked into place with some more rapid rivets, making for this honestly pretty sweet closure setup. 
Now for one final, just a ah, the pièce de résistance. I busted out my airbrush and went over the blighted areas with a light coating of black, showing the rot that spreads wherever the corruption takes root. And hot damn, I love this thing. Aside from the undeniably cool look, the whole story that Maddie and I created to go along with this thing just makes it so epic. I think, I think we'll probably end up writing it down to kind of go along with it, just to add more context to the, the overall costume we're making. It, it is so cool. It is really cool. All right, so that's the first piece of my corrupted druid build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you hit me with that thumbs up love and do not forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, if you like what I do here and you want to support it, consider checking out my Patreon. Every little bit helps and makes it so I can keep making videos like this. Speaking of which, let me give a shout out to my newest high tier Patreon members. Thumper and the Ogre, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Again, it's people like you that keep the lights on here at Skill Tree, so I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you. All right, finally, if there's any skills you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it in the comment section and I'll add it to the list. All right, I should get going. Every moment I linger, the blight gets stronger. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.